Welcome back to the Midweek Update. Hey Mepam, welcome to this year's first Midweek Update. There will be a completely new crew, so you will get to see some faces that you've never seen on this show before. I can't wait for everyone to meet our new cast. In the meantime, let's take a look how dancers and kickliners with busy schedules manage their schoolwork and how sports are getting back to normal. This and more as we take a look at what's going on in this week's Midweek Update. I'm Jazeth Tiberia. And I'm Sammy Rooney. And welcome back to the Midweek Update, the B&B show that brings you closer to the people and places in and around the Mepham community. Well, Sammy, I'm excited to be hosting Midweek Update with you this year. Me too. Sammy, you dance, right? Yes, I spend a lot of time after school at my studio. It sometimes becomes a lot with school and other activities, but I have a lot of support to help me out. B&B's Haley Hepworth gave us more of an idea of life as a dancer. Five, six, Just go seven, for it. Eight. One, go, two, three, go, four. Normally focusing on the bigger sports like soccer and football, dance and kickline seem to be overlooked. With kickline after school and dance at late hours of the night, Many of these athletes don't have much time for homework and studying. As a member of Calhoun Kickline, sophomore Jordan Wilbur has struggled with time management between practice and extra help. A lot of times I have kickline and dance back to back, and sometimes I don't have time to go to extra help for school or hang out with my friends, so it kind of makes everything more busy. Six, seven, eight. One, go, two, three, go, four. Five, go, six, seven, eight. Pull one. Grab your hand, two, four, one. Jordan's dance teacher, Kiana Escobedo, understands the life of a student. And as a Mepham Kickline alumni, she empathizes for her students that have many hours of challenging and time-consuming work ahead of them after school. Um, yes, a lot of them try to get their homework done before dance if they come later in the day. And then some of them that come early in the day try to get them done at the end of the day, and if not, some of the seniors, I know they study like after class, which is hard, but I, was just, I did the same thing, so you have to study at like 10.30 at night, which sucks, but I know that they do it, and they do well in school still. It's hard to find time to get work done without getting stressed out, but sometimes you need to focus on yourself. Sophomore Alana Hechtman has been representing Mepham Kickline since she was a freshman and also maintaining a life at a dance studio. Sometimes I don't know what to do, but I just try to breathe and take it one step at a time. Remember that I don't have to get everything done all at once and can take a few moments for myself. Doing extracurriculars like dance and kickline takes up a lot of time and effort and managing schoolwork along with that isn't always the easiest. But this has become normal for a lot of teenagers. For BMB, I'm Haley Hepworth. Thanks, Haley. I had no idea that being on the kickline and dancing was hard, also while trying to get my work done. Yeah, I bet it was a lot easier over the summer when schoolwork wasn't one more thing we had to worry about. Definitely. I miss summer, when it was nice and hot out. I really miss that as the weather is changing. But it's not too late to still be thinking about the summer. B&B's Morgan Hafke took us through the challenges of her summer. Times I almost died over the summer. Got my driver's license somehow. Found out I'm not very good at driving. I was dragged on like 20 hikes with family. Nearly passed out every single time. Walked under a waterfall on a dare and almost got bitten by water snakes. I didn't see the water snakes, but my brother said that they were there. So. Okay, so like I was on like this like boulder walk with my family near the ocean. And my mom told me don't go on the wet rocks because they're slippery. But I didn't listen. And so I slid down on my back and almost fell into the water. But I caught myself just in time like in the movies. And here's a picture of my back after it happened. It was very traumatic. And my friend got me a job at Let's Roll, where I make ice cream with razor-sharp blades. Ava, where's the stabby thingy? So I got Morgan a job here where she works with knives all day. Oh, it's in my hand, stupid. Oh, what have I done? <laughs> Wow, that is an interesting summer. Mine wasn't as crazy, but there will be more to see just from Morgan. This week, we introduce a new segment called Morgan Being Morgan. Right. You can look forward to all new Morgan experiences every week. I can't wait. But now it's time to move into some more sports. B&B's Matt Mano gave us a closer look at some of our fall athletes, along with their coaches after the shortened seasons we experienced last year. 
For the first time in a year and a half, high school sports are back on a normal schedule. Fans are back in the stands, and the band is playing at football games again. Athletes and coaches alike could not be more excited. Everyone knows about the COVID-19 pandemic that turned our world upside down. The sports world especially felt the impact, and the 2020 season was anything but normal. Last year, you know, it was a lot of, you had to come out, you had to wear a mask. It was a lot more strict. This year, you know, it's more lenient, and we're able to do a lot more, and we're able to come together a lot better. So last year, during basketball season at Mepham, we started with open gym practices, and at those practices, we weren't even allowed to share equipment. We had our own basketball, we had to dribble our own basketball, shoot our own basketball, we couldn't even touch each other's equipment. And they had to be Clorox sanitized after and before playing. Um, they were a little difficult, speaking that we had to all, all be socially distant really on the sidelines and it, we did have to wear masks, that was a big problem. Um, this year, definitely way better, but we all we all definitely struggled a little bit, like not the team morale was a little down because we all had to be socially distant and the mass definitely played a factor with just, just being annoying in a way, but happy it worked out. Much smaller impact. We've still had an impact, so yeah, we've lost players for quarantine, um, but we had much more contact tracing in the spring. We were missing multiple players at a time. Um, really, we've just seen one or two cases so far this year. As a new season starts and positivity rates decline, High school sports ease restrictions and let the kids play. And since sports are back to normal, the fans can return. It's so exciting just being able to cheer on my, my peers, my classmates. And it just gets a much better connection between the students because we all want to support each other. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a huge, huge factor in creating a game day atmosphere. Um, it's definitely more exciting for the players to have. Student fans back. Having the parents last year, it was still nice, but having a lot more people show up to games makes me so much happier. And just having the support, hearing the cheering at all aspects of the game, it, it definitely makes a difference. After a year and a half of wearing masks, staying six feet apart, and having to quarantine, one question looms large. Is this our new normal? I think it'll go back to normal at some point. I'm not thinking that it'll stay like this, but also you never know with what's going on. But I hope it'll go back to normal, but for now we just have to do as we're told. I think that there will be. I think it will. If it already feels like we're headed in the right direction. I think that it, there will eventually be back to normal without the masks and social distancing. As the season progresses and COVID evolves, we will learn if this truly is our new normal. For BNB, I'm Matt Mana. Thanks, Matt. Now let's throw it back over to our latest Mepham Sports. Honor's got the week off, so I'm stepping in for your midweek week in Mepham Sports. Last week, BNB had its cameras all over Mepham Athletics. On Wednesday, the boys' soccer team took on Jerica. With tensions rising, Deshaun Maitland made a spectacular play to tie the game, but in the end, both teams fell short of the win and left with one point on the Conference A1 table. Not only that, we were, a we were at the boys' volleyball team's 3-0 win over Plain Edge. Led by Leo Asta and BNB's own Sean McQuillan, the undefeated Pirates overpowered the Red Devils. Yesterday, the boys' soccer team looked to stay unbeaten versus Great Neck North, and the cross-country team had their final league meet of the season. They traveled to Beth Page Park to face Cary, Calhoun, and Great Neck North. Today, the boys' volleyball team takes on Sawanica, and the girls' soccer team plays Southside. Watch it live on the BNB YouTube, and don't forget to wear pink to the game. Not only that, you can watch the boys' soccer team versus MacArthur live, and you might see the debuts of some of our younger sportscasters. I'm Matt Mano with your midweek week in Mepham Sports. Now back to Sammy and Giuseppe in the studio. Thanks, Matt. Be sure to stay tuned to our YouTube channel for more sports. We have a lot coming up in the near future, and you don't want to miss it. I would never. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Midweek Update. We'll be back next week with all new stories from around the BMCHSD to bring you inside the parts of the community we don't always get to see. Until then, I'm Giseth Chavaria. And I'm Sammy Rooney. And we'll see you all next midweek.